In today's video, we are discussing the BIS Scheme 10 certification and the products falling under the certification. Welcome to the MindSync YouTube channel. MindSync is a professional organization providing compliance consulting, legal, and advisory services. First, let's explore all the mandatory BIS certification schemes. There are five mandatory schemes, and today we'll focus on Scheme 10 certification. Under this scheme, the manufacturer may be granted a license for demonstrating conformity of goods or articles, the option for demonstrating conformity of the management system, a certificate of conformity, moving on to the certificate of conformity. The Bureau may grant a certificate of conformity instead of a license if the product is not intended to be manufactured on a continuous basis. In such a case, the manufacturer shall not be authorized to use the standard mark. The certificate of conformity shall apply to a specific product prototype, lot, or batch only and will not authorize the production of similar products on a continuous basis. BIS has not yet started issuing certificate of conformity but the same is given in the provisions of Scheme 10. BIS may start anytime soon. Now let's look into the Electrical Equipment Quality Control Order. First, let's understand what this QCO is. The Electrical Equipment Quality Control Order, issued by the Department of Heavy Industry under the Ministry of Heavy Industry on the 16th of March, encompasses eight products under mandatory certification of BIS with effect from the 10th of May 2024. This QCO applies to a broad spectrum of products, including switches, disconnectors, switch gears, motor starters, and control gears. Under this order, any industry manufacturing these products in India or outside India and supplying to India must obtain certification and can only store or sell these products with the standard mark under a valid license. Now let's move to the effective dates. These are the effective dates. Now, let's explore the products under Scheme 10. There are 8 mandatory standards, and we'll dive into each in detail. The first standard pertains to low voltage switchgear and control gear part 2 circuit breakers, which applies to circuit breakers whose main contacts are designed for circuits with a rated voltage not exceeding 1000 volts AC or 1500 volts DC. The interrupting mediums include air brake, vacuum brake, and gas brake. The second standard also falls under low voltage switchgear and control gear part 2 circuit breakers. It covers switches, disconnectors, switch disconnectors, fuse combination units, and their dedicated accessories for distribution circuits and motor circuits with a rated voltage not exceeding 1000 volts AC or 1500 volts DC. Moving on to the third standard, it focuses on electromechanical contactors and motor starters, encompassing various equipment such as electromechanical contactors, starters, motor protective switching devices, actuators of contactor relays, and contacts dedicated exclusively to the coil circuit of the contactor or contactor relay. The fourth standard addresses AC semiconductor motor controllers and starters, applicable to controllers and starters incorporating a series mechanical switching device, intended for circuits with a rated voltage not exceeding 1000 volts AC. The standard characterizes A, C, semiconductor motor controllers and starters with and without bypass means. Next in line is the standard for AC semiconductor motor controllers and contactors for non-motor loads, which applies to controllers and contactors designed for altering the state of AC electric circuits between the on-state and the off-state. Subsequently, we have the standard for electromechanical control circuit devices, covering control circuit devices and switching elements used for controlling, signaling, and interlocking switchgear and control gear, with a rated voltage not exceeding 1000 volts AC. Following that, there's a standard for inductive and capacitive proximity switches, ultrasonic proximity switches, photoelectric proximity switches, and non-mechanical magnetic proximity switches, all designed to sense the presence of various objects, with a magnetic field. Lastly, we have the standard for electrical emergency stop devices with mechanical latching function, applicable to control circuit devices and switching elements used for controlling, signaling, and interlocking switchgear and control gear, with a rated voltage not exceeding 1000 volts AC. Coming to the implementation dates, the Indian standards are going be effective in a phased manner. The dates are bifurcated based on lab availability for testing. 
Talking specifically about IS-60947 Part 2 that is for molded case and air circuit breakers where the effective dates are based on testing. So for the 10th of May 2024 any product that are up to 630 amps and up to 440 volts AC, the effective date is May 10th 2024. It is excluding EMC testings and any range that falls under this category with products that fall under EMC, the effective date only for EMC portion is May 10, 2026. Regarding the validity of the license, the license shall be initially granted for a period of not less than 3 years and up to 6 years. It may be renewed for a further period of not less than 3 years and up to 6 years. This also applies to manufacturers and importers under FMCS. Now, let's discuss the standard mark. The standard mark can be displayed in single color or multicolor. The licensee shall display the standard mark on the article or the packaging or both in a manner that is easily visible. The standard mark shall be legible, indelible, and non-removable with the durability of marking as per the relevant Indian standard wherever applicable. The display of words shall not be less than aerial font size 6. Any device with an integrated display screen may present the standard mark electronically instead of a physical presentation on the product. If your business finds itself in need of guidance or support regarding certification or compliance matters, MindSync is here to assist you.